And our next presentation is yeah. by Agneta Olsen, who's, whose work is based out of Cardiff and Exeter University, talking to mapping disease and distribution of fish using AI. Hey, my name is Agneta Sam Olsen, and I'm going to talk to you about our project, Computer Vision for Fish Disease Detection and Classification. So we know that many widespread fish diseases have visible symptoms that you can see with the naked eye. And computer vision is AI for understanding what's going on in still images and video. So we are hoping that we can use computer vision to supplement existing fish health monitoring using AI. So I am a computer scientist and a physicist, but at the moment I'm doing a PhD in biosciences at Cardiff University. Uh, I'm supported by an excellent team of supervisors, also from biosciences at Cardiff University, uh, Dr. Sarah Perkins, who's an expert on citizen science and on wildlife disease, Professor Joe Cable, who supports me on aquatic pathogens. Chris Jones is a professor at Cardiff University in the computer science department and he specializes in geographical information systems and retrieval. And Dr. Jack Christmas from Exeter University is an expert on computer vision. The research is funded via NERC, so I'm part of the GW4 Fresh Centre for Doctoral Training that they fund. We also collaborate with the Ogmore Angling Association, who are helping us with a citizen science project that I'll outline in a bit. And we are working with the Environment Agency. So the aim of this project is to create a computer vision system that can detect and classify disease based on visible symptoms in still images of fish. And we also want to map the distribution of these wild fish and their health status. And we're starting with freshwater fish uh, at the moment, looking at Ogmore River, but hoping to look at UK wide rivers. So the first step for us has been to collect images and look at their quality. Computer vision algorithms need lots and lots of examples of the classes that you want it to be able to classify into. So here on the left I've got an example of some dummy fish. Outlined in green are different examples of healthy fish and outlined in red are different examples of fish with some sort of visible symptoms of disease that could be fish lice or saprolemia. And with all of these examples available the computer vision algorithm can learn what features define a healthy fish, which ones define a fish with disease, and how can it best separate the two so that the classification is as accurate as possible. Most of the uh, images we've got at the moment are from online sources, so angling forums, social media, anywhere online really, and also we have some good examples of fish with disease from the Environment Agency. Uh, we are working with these images uh, on selecting the best algorithm for our problem. So we're looking to train algorithms, which is what we call the learning process for computer vision algorithms. We've done a little pilot uh, with limited data and we got 80% accuracy. That was using the AlexNet neural net, which is quite old now, but still one of the first sort of good neural nets that are available. Accuracy here means when, how big the ratio is of the algorithm being able to predict what we have already labeled an image as, so healthy or having saprolemia in this case. So this whole computer vision strand, we want to combine with a citizen science strand. That's where we're working with the Ogmore Angling Association and we're hoping to have the pilot going live in October. They will be using iNaturalist, which is an app where you can upload photos and then an AI in the background suggests a species of 
whatever you've uploaded a photo of. And we can then download all of the images along with the species and with location and time information so that we can map the disease and just sort of fish distribution temporally and spatially. So that's what we're doing at the moment. In the future, we need to keep building our image database of freshwater fish with and without visible signs of disease because we need as many examples as possible. So if you're sitting on lots of images of freshwater fish there and you think this sounds interesting, then don't hesitate to contact me on the email below. Uh, in parallel with this, we also need to look at the image quality and streamline the labelling, which is the process of saying this fish is healthy, this fish is not. And there are lots of different software packages and different metrics for evaluating that are available. And if anyone has recommendations or experiences, I'd be very happy to discuss. Similarly, with the algorithm selection and the training and the evaluation, possible comparison with humans. If anyone has experiences they're willing to share, then I would be very excited to discuss that as well. All right. Thank you very much for listening and I'm looking forward to answering any questions. Thanks very much, Agnetta. So there's when I was listening to your talk, it immediately jumped out to me that this is where we've spoken all day about different types of communities being involved and needing to cross over. And here's an opportunity for us to cross over, especially from FAO, where I know there's a similar um, process happening with diseases of crops from trees and such like. And I wondered if, if you'd had any opportunities to cross over with those groups who had also tried to present or to develop workflows and maybe speak a little bit to this AlexNet and why you selected AlexNet. Uh, so for the first question, we know that there's there's overlap with both looking at crops and looking at medical images as well. Um, I don't have, I haven't had any contact with any groups. I'm just in my first year and uh, yeah. So any contacts on anyone who's doing similar stuff, uh, that would be much appreciated. Uh, when it comes to Alex Nest and the choice of that, it was just uh, it's the first neural network that was shown to on this image net data set that people have been talking about previously. It performed really well and it's the first one that was a convolutional neural net that was showed that this was a possible thing to use for good quality classification. Um, but as people have talked about the RCNNs and net rest 50 or by numbers. There's lots of lots of different ones that you can choose depending on your computational resources and other things. Um, yeah. When we Agnetta, when we were starting to discuss how to run these this event, this initiative for the forum, one of the sessions we had was to just get the other teams in here, the plant net, the plant net team, the uh, other types of plant diseases team, and. And that, that was thought to be a very good way to go, apart from the fact that you were, we sort of ran out of time. We have that many people would like to talk about what they do, but maybe this is a, an opportunity for FAO to play a role of bringing those other groups to the table where we can alert people who've come to this or registered for this event, just to allow them to see what's happening in these other domains. So thanks very much, Agnetha.